So I'm just asking myself, how can we... Because again, we can't, we can't keep wanting women at the top and mm. we don't put these structures in place, like you said. Mm -hmm. But how can we convince like the workforce now? Because, okay, let's look at it now from the mm -hmm. angle of the employers. Mm -hmm. You're telling an employer that as a woman, when I give birth, I need three to six months with my child. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to be working as much as mm -hmm. I would have worked if I didn't have a child. Mm -hmm. You know, men are now saying they want to take breaks as mm -hmm. well. Some men want to have paternity leave. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you want these structures in the office space, there should be a space for pumping, there should be a space for maybe a, a pregnant woman going to nap in the mm. afternoon when she's... Because I remember at work then... And you, they sleep there. My dear that's first that, that, that sleep. If I don't sleep... <laughs> if I don't sleep... <laughs> that sleep is spiritual. It's not, you can't help it. It's not, you will sleep eight hours plus, but you must sleep but in you must sleep, Yes, you <laughs> know. Actually, when you just finish eating, you must sleep. You must sleep. So, for it to be convenient for women, mm -hmm. we need to have these things in place. Mm -hmm. But how do you convince employers that... How, what, how, how, how is it adding to their bottom line? Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because, again, they're all about profit. They're not yes, a charity organization. They're not here to mm -hmm. make you feel good. It's not, that your child they have is not for them. It's mm -hmm. for your own good. Mm -hmm. you know, so, but how do we convince them? Because I feel like there's a, there's a lack of consideration for this human Issues. resource yes, part. That's yes, what I call yes, it, the yes, human exactly. resource part. But how do we not convince them and say, okay, women need this, women need that? How do we balance it all? I think that um, it starts with policy. Mm -hmm. from like actual Nigerian policy from National Assembly. Because if there's a policy now, like now people are lobbying for paternity leave for men. Yeah. If that is a law, mm. it will trickle down to the organization. Yeah. So now, if they don't comply, it's not a labor law issue. Okay. And they cannot bring them to court okay. for unfair labor practices and all of that. Yeah. That's where those things come in. So it has to be, and that's why organizations like FIDA and other NGOs are lobbying for these things, for representation in the National Assembly. So when they make it a law and they make it a policy, there's no way an oil company or this company exactly. or that company can do that without getting into trouble. So it now becomes part of the system. It now yeah. becomes a requirement. It now becomes consideration for it. Yeah. And then the thing now we have in Nigeria is that a lot of these businesses that we have, all these small companies, that small, small businesses that don't care, they don't whatever. But you can sue. People don't know you can, you can sue anybody. That's the truth. Too. Many you people don't know. Anybody. But how do we make them know now? That's you... what my video. Please go and subscribe to my okay. channel. Uh, actually, I'm trying to <laughs> give you people. I'll try to be doing more legal videos. Yes. So I can give you guys and you're really trying with it, I'm seriously. Trying, but they're not watching now. They like this. <laughs> they like me, they like this. Except it's, it's legal about something trending. Do you understand? Yes, watch, yeah. Yeah. But I have one about recently, actually. Okay. I'll talk to you about it. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, that's policy. It. That's how it starts. And you know, okay, now mm. let's go to even feminism small because mm. I don't know why it's always, I feel like I have a, a beef with people that call themselves feminists. Mm. I mean, I don't call myself a feminist even though I believe in equality of the sexes and all of mm -hmm. that, you know. I think the problem I have most times with feminists is that we are too concentrated or we are too concerned about who is cooking and who is not cooking. Who is, uh, who is in bringing home the bacon who is not home bringing home the bacon. I feel like if we call ourselves feminist, feminists and if we, if we say that we are really about equality of women, advancing women mm -hmm. and all that, why are we not pushing for this kind of things? Why are we not discussing this kind of things more? Because you cannot make a change by just staying on the internet and just typing, mm -hmm. all men are scum. It's not changing anything. In fact, you're even excluding the men that you're supposed to mm -hmm. bring to the table to yeah, help us. Because the men are the ones that will move feminism forward. Yes, exactly. So I feel like, do we need like a, to restructure the whole thing? Do we need to have a new name? I think it's because the people that are the loudest are the people that you are hearing. They are women for years my mother has been fighting for this i know other yeah. women like when i grew up with this so i can tell you for free that people have been fighting like safe motherhood practices for instance yeah i remember there was an organization when i was very small there was like actually um justice mary odelina when she was the wife of the governor, governor okay. the first lady that was her champion oh, safe wow. motherhood, to make sure that women got adequate health care because a lot of women are dying in health exactly. because of their own, you know, these, these are the issues that a lot of women are talking about but now because of social media the people that want to and see, if we realize that a lot of those people just want to become influencers. Oh, that's true. That's I said it true. before that some people create topics that will trend, they will get followership. Before you know it, oh, I'm a Twitter influencer. I yeah. Twitter, I always Twitter have yes, Twitter. yes, yes, yes. Mm. Before you know, people are, brands are calling you and this one, are, yeah. this one they want. So we have to understand that feminism, people are working behind the scenes. People are lobbying every day. People are trying to get education for young girls. People are trying to get internet access, STEM education. I went on yeah. the radio the other day talking about STEM education and all of that. For yeah. young 
young girls, people are doing these things, but the loudest voices because yeah. social media amplifies rubbish. Exactly. It's these people. And they now call and say, oh, feminist, feminist, this, feminist, that, oh, yeah. feminist, uh, COVID. Oh, this yes, all those you know, things. They yeah. kind of make it so vilify it to yes. the point that so nobody negative. now wants to identify with it. it. Is, yeah. But if you actually check, well, the people who are doing the work, you don't even see them. You don't see the them, time. yeah. You don't see them a lot of the time. And this thing about, you know, women's um, choices as well, mm. I feel like we also don't talk much about women who decide to be stay-at-home moms or who... I think this is me. Yeah, yeah, or who have to be stay-at-home moms yes. because not everybody can work. I always say this thing. Not, not everybody, everybody can, wants to work. Not everybody wants to. Even in those, that way. Yes, but even, even those who want to, not mm-hmm. all of them can because... Maybe your husband is one, let's say I want to work, but my mm-hmm. husband is one politician, one top mm-hmm. G up there. Mm-hmm. And two of us will not be doing outside. outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so who is, who is with who's the kids? With, yeah. You know, so not everybody can, not everybody wants, wants to. to yeah. So I feel like we should have, we should talk more about, you know, people that want to stay at home and even talk more about how they can help themselves mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. Because one thing I always, you know, try to advise people is, have something doing it at mm-hmm. home, but it doesn't have to be like money-making adventure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For instance, a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. People, I think, um, stay-at-home moms or women who are at home, might be wives or whatever, mm-hmm. I feel like they underrate the power of creating content. Mm-hmm. Because as much as, if you even remove the income earning part of it, mm-hmm. a lot of women at home don't have any outlets. Creative outlets, yes. any like Emotional, it, anything, yes. They're just mm-hmm. sucking everything in, just mm-hmm. keeping everything mm-hmm. in until they explode. But if you have a creative outlet, if you have something you're doing, it doesn't have to be content creation. If you have something you're doing, maybe... Is uh, like someone talked yesterday about uh, um, someone that uses the gym as her outlet. Mm-hmm. You know, some people use different things. So these are things that we should talk more about. We should not vilify women that want to stay at home or want to, because for me, some women in their own case, staying at home is having it all. Mm-hmm. So for instance, you're married to someone like uh, Richard Daniels. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. I, I said Richard. Where no. have I going to? Which <laughs> work? <laughs> Please <laughs> let me balance the money and be say, hello, chef. Bring yeah. this, bring this. I understand what you're saying, but I think that um, we came for uh, from a generation that saw moms, a lot of mothers stay at home, right? Yeah. A lot of moms, the generation before our moms, yeah. stay at home, right, and suffer for it in a way. Yeah, you I know, understand. Abuse, emotional, whatever. Now we had our moms who tried to do something mm-hmm. and still suffered for it. For somehow. it, yeah. So now we are at this age where but, it's like you don't really mm-hmm. know like which one you know and mm-hmm. all of those things. And I think that women do ourselves a disservice. When I did, um, when I was in Canada, one of my minor courses was um, women's rights. Was it women's rights? Women's studies, rather, mm-hmm. not women's rights. And something that we learned, I kept emphasizing, that feminism is not one size fits all. Yeah, it's kind of even the, it cannot. The feminism in America is not the same here. Yeah. Because culture invol- is imbibed in a lot of things. Yes, culture and tradition might be wrong in terms of some of the things, some of the practices. And as we evolve, we keep amending and changing and you know evolving and, and all of that stuff but the issue now is that as a muslim for instance i want to wear an hijab yes but some people see an hijab as, as oppression. oppression and they are saying it's an oppression they are coming online to talk about yes. it and they are I'm making seeing... laws countries are making banning the, i think it's france that actually banned yes. the, breaker, the full breaker because of some instances that happened and all of that some christian women they say they want to wear white when their husband died because of this and this people are saying no wearing white is or wearing black they, they say mm. there's a thing traditional practices that they said is harmful is shameful and some it, it, it cannot be a blanket yes, thing for, thing everybody. for everybody. So we need to emphasize choice, but mm. informed choice. Yeah.